Thank you so much, Randy, and thank you everybody for showing up. Um, I'm here with my awesome business partner, Shelly Johnson. Uh, she's going to talk in a second a little bit about um, where we came from and how we um, but before then, I mean, this class is how we doubled, um, this is how to double your production with relationships and exposure. This is really kind of the formula that we use to, um, to build our business and then double our business. Uh, we, as you, uh, Shelly will tell you, we came to EXP in 2017 and um we came here from keller williams and we were about a 45 million dollar production team and we have our production um by utilizing the great tools and um things that exp uses and we'll explain how that happened and how exp played a major part in us doubling our production. But with that, I will uh, introduce you to my awesome business partner, Shelly Johnson, and she is going to tell you a little bit about us, our team, and how we got here. Um, right now, I see that people cannot hear us. Is everyone able to hear Craig and I right now? I just want to make sure that we are, everyone's okay to hear us. I can hear you on mobile. Okay, good. Uh, anybody else can hear us? Yeah, She's on mobile. Sorry. Is anybody in the room? Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks so much, really, Craig said, for having both of us today and, and joining us today. We Our goal is to help bring you some valuable, someone else is saying they can't hear anything. Um, Should we say unmute audience? Uh, Randy, mine is showing off. I just turned it on and off again. Can everyone hear me now? I can still hear you on mobile. Okay, he's saying people in the audience that are in seats cannot hear me possibly, so I want to make sure that that is not the case. How about that? I can hear you, Craig. I don't know if everybody else can hear. People are saying it's going on and off. Some people are saying yes. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> Sorry, we've got it fixed. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Um, like, like Craig was saying, we just want to bring you a ton of value and um, things that you can take and implement in your business today. Uh, we'll share a little bit of background on Craig and I and how we've gotten where we are just so you can have some perspective on who we are and um, maybe take some takeaways from that. So Craig and I partnered in 2012 and we had a small team at Keller Williams, great company. Um, we built a great uh, business there in that company. While we were there, we basically grew our business to 45 million in production, 42 million in production. And since we joined EXP, we are at 85 million. So we basically have doubled our business since we joined EXP two and a half years ago in 2017. And we're actually join, uh, approaching our third year anniversary in July. Um, we love EXP. It's the best decision we've ever made for our business. I'm sure a ton of you feel that way too. Um, basically what Craig and I did was we, Craig, can you go to the next slide please? Um, basically what Craig and I did was we had our team at, at KW. We were excited about the opportunity at EXP. And through revenue share um, over the past two and a half years, we've been able to um, put away some money and also put that money back into our business and hire people that could help us scale our business. So we basically have taken the money that we've been able to earn through revenue share, which we had never had before, and actually hire a marketing director, um, people that could actually help us in our business to help Craig and I get out of those roles and be more on purpose with our business. So that's been amazing. Um, as far as what we've done to double, Craig, could you go to the next screen? 
Can everybody hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Craig can hear me because he's not moving the screen along. <laughs> he has control of the, of the slide deck. So it, it would be helpful if I could see the next screen. <laughs> um, it, so it's all basically, about we are. Is that what you're seeing? Good. Now I'm seeing the Excel sh same page, the Excel page. I'm just seeing the very first slide, Craig. It's, <laughs> so you guys are seeing it and I'm not? Is that what's happening? I'm just going to do the slide refreshed, deck, Craig. Ellie, and... In the upper right. Okay. Yeah, it's not doing anything. All right, I'm just going to go to the slide deck, Craig, and then I'll tell you where I am, okay? I'll just hop into okay. that. No big deal. Okay, guys. So we're on our story, Craig. I believe right now is that the one you're on. Um, I'm behind the curtain. Okay. So what we want to do is basically give you a peek behind the curtain of how we actually grew our business from or doubled our business in two and a half years. Craig and I um, did not know how what an impact EXP was going to have on our business and what we were going to be able to do with that extra income because we really didn't anticipate how revenue share could change our business because what happened was Craig and I were not having to do 10, 20 more transactions to hire that next person. So in order to, to scale before we were always having to reach in our own pocket and pull money out of our own pocket and going, okay, we're going to take that risk and hire that next person that's going to help us go ahead, move ahead. So what what EXP, the revenue share piece of it did for us was it allowed us to be able to have that, that residual income sitting there that we didn't have before and invest that back into a high caliber person to help us move the needle in our business. Um, basically, if you go to the next slide, Craig, it's all about people. Um, when we talk about our community, I'm going to talk mostly about the relationship side, and I'm going to move quickly because I know a lot of you are great at relationships, um, but I want to share with you some of the really cool things we've done in our business to really um, push those relationships to the next level and really, really um, dive into with our clients. So I really, my, my, that's my strength. I'm a relationship person. I'm a connector. I love people. Um, I love agents. And I think that if we come at, we, we come at our business with a high energy, a lot of enthusiasm, as well as a lot of great knowledge about our industry, then we are able to basically, people are attracted to that. They love energy. They want to be around it. They want to, they want, they, people are always looking for an outside source to help pull them along what in, in some direction. So when you show up with a lot of energy and hopefully these kids kind of evoke that feeling in you, I mean, that's the kind of feeling. Remember when we were kids and we could climb a tree and there was never a reason why we couldn't do something except for our parents telling us we couldn't so I love that to, to think about back to when we were kids and we were afraid of nothing and um, when we give that energy to our clients and we're afraid that we're able to help them see that we can help them through a path through leading them through our great energy then they'll, they'll get their win of getting that home or um, anything we do so it's all about community working together being a huge resource to your clients and being a connector or a connection to other people in the community and when you link those four things together it's super powerful people um, people appreciate it when you're a connector and you help them solve when you help solve their problems so by being a connector a lot of times we're just solving someone's problem they um, need to know somebody or have a resource available to them so it's really good so how do you do that one of the things you need to do is really plan ahead and and I'll go into that a little bit deeper as we go into the slide presentation about what that means planning ahead um, first, I'm going to go into the next slide, which is why do people refer to us? Craig, can you go to the next slide? 
First, they, they refer to us because they like us. Awesome. <laughs> they like us. Um, we're knowledgeable. We create an exceptional experience. We're a problem solver. We have confidence when we walk in the room and we, we evoke positivity. So when P when you have that combination, you can't people, it may not come right away if you're brand new in the agent, it, a brand new agent, but what you do is you put out enough energy or enough and you just keep doing the same things over and over and over again, showing up the same way with that confidence, even when things are tough. I know right now a lot of us could be scared with the COVID, um, but just look for opportunity to be a resource right now for people. Like one of the things we did recently um, was create, basically just start talking to business owners about their business and giving them a platform to share on on social media. So um, I'll go into that a little bit further later as well. Um, so let's go to passion and a plan, Craig. So um, when you see this picture of this dog, if you're a dog lover like I am, um, it, it evokes emotion so and involvement. So when you're in your community and you're doing something, we do a lot with um, rescues and LLS, which is the Lymphoma, Leukemia Lymphoma Society, things we're passionate about or things that have touched our lives that make us, that we're on purpose with and passionate about. Sorry. I gotta turn that off. I always forget to do that. It's on my computer. Um, create something. So basically what you're doing when you pick something in your community that's um, a community charity or a community event or a chamber or you're involved in something in your community that you're passionate whether it's like whitewater rafting, you're a diver, if a scuba diver, if you are a swimmer, an athlete, a triathlon person, whatever your passion is, if you just like kind of involve that into your business in some capacity, you'll create something to focus on with other people besides just the real estate side of who we are. And it kind of, cr it creates a, um, People, people like you because they're like, oh, they have something in common with me. They really, really love dogs. And I love rescuing dogs too. And how can we work together as a community to help these animals in need or children or whatever that passion is you have. Um, so then what you do is you create opportunities for you to get together to talk about those passions, whether it's at the Whitewater Center where you meet up to go whitewater rafting or you're gonna do an, an event where you're raising money for adoption for dogs or rescuing dogs or um, LLS where people come together that have lost loved ones that had, had, have had lymphoma or leukemia or any other kind of cancer. Um, so you just create opportunities and you be like, you be a leader in that charitable giving. Um, and the cool thing about that is it doesn't feel like work because first of all, you love it. Second of all, um, you're, you get to lead it. So you get to design what that looks like for your group. And then um, what happens as a result of that is you get opportunities to meet people and um, be able to connect them together and help them. And eventually it turns into real estate sales, which is a kind of a byproduct of our passion. Um, so you just create engagement. You can do that through social media, which Craig is going to go into along as well. So it's not just showing up to the event to go um, to, for adoption, dog adoption or something like that. Um, you can create a, a, create engagement on social media as well about your passion. So it kind of marries the two together where you have this passion for whatever it is, like children, dogs, and you marry that to social media um, with, with content. So here's an example of something we did recently during COVID is we started doing a basically a weekly or bi-weekly meeting with um, small business owners and what how that happened was we we're like hey what could we do that would really help um, some of our local owners we know they're struggling and we see them trying to pivot right now just like we all are and I just was looking around our community and I'm like hey this guy is a restaurant owner. Well, guess what he's doing? He's actually selling, he can't sell the meat cooked, so he's selling it uncooked because our grocery stores, you couldn't get hamburger or ribeye or, or chicken for that matter. So I thought, wow, he's being really innovative and pivoting in his business. I want to talk to him about that. Craig and I were like, let's talk to this guy about that. And um, so we created a Zoom call and we did it on a, we do it every other Tuesday. And basically we interview a business owner and that business owner, he got on the call. I said, hey, you know, you must have other people in your industry, in your restaurant industry that could use help as well. Who could we interview? I'm like, like, you're, like a brewery, a local brewery. Could we interview one of them? And he said, yeah, I love 11 Lake, 
Lakes Brewery, which is a local brewery here in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where Craig and I are from. I don't know if I said that earlier. And um, so basically, we did this thing where we did an interview on Zoom. And when we first started that call, it was interesting because they were really, really down. And I actually was a little concerned. I'm like, oh, we got this Zoom call coming on live. And live in like 15 minutes and these people are really really down I mean I don't know how this is going to go well, Craig and I got on the zoom we started interviewing them getting things kind of going with that and Craig came up with the idea of why don't we do a, um, a beer uh, sorry I can't think of it a beer brew and um, what do we call it? Oh, beer brew and band <laughs> sorry uh, uh, sorry beer bites I can't even remember what we called it but it's something like that where it's beer the restaurant and you can pick up the food thank you <laughs> my brain was broken um, so beer band and barbecue and what we did was we basically created a um, a, a week a weekly a weekly event on Saturdays where people go and pick up food you can see in the next slide um, Craig has it on there um, Eleven Lakes Brewery and Harvey's where we created a time for them to pick up food at Harvey's and they, they did family food for six so it was like $35 to feed a family of six and then you pick up your growler at the brewery and then at eight o'clock at night we had a really awesome band play every Saturday a live stream and then we all do watch parties from it and the involvement from that was just incredible I mean it helped both their businesses and then we've just been doing that ever since we did another one called Down for Donuts, and Down for Donuts was a brand new business in our community that really um, actually started on March the 21st. They opened, and it's for it was a, a family that have a Down syndrome son who's 30 who loves working with his dad, and he's co-owner of this business. And we interviewed them, and um, they had a great response from people coming and learning about their business. So just creating ways to engage with to basically engage with the community and support local right now is great. A lot of you probably are doing that, but this was just an idea that we had. Other ideas have spun off of that, which has really been fun to watch um, people grow and be able to help our communities together. And we've, we've and our relationships are really deeper now. So coming out of this, who do you think they're going to think of when they think of real estate? They're going to think of LePage Johnson Realty Group. Um, and we have we have fun doing it. So I think Craig, I'm on the page with um, the the actual like graphics. So I was going to show the graphics that we, that we made. Are you there? Yep, they're on there. They're on there. Do you want to talk about the graphics, Craig? Sure. Sure. So you know what, what Shelley was saying is is extremely important because that is the foundation. I mean, how many times have we gotten into a great conversation? and built a great relationship at an event or something like that. And um, you're like, wow, this is great. And then you lose contact with that person. And that that slowly fades away over time. And then you start beating yourself up and saying, well, you know what, I can't, I can't talk now or I can't uh, reach out to that person now because it would be awkward and I don't know what to say. Um, so that's where the exposure part comes in. And you know what you're gonna, gonna see is it's a lot more than just coming up with an idea of doing a Zoom call or um, you know, a one event, it's, it's a lot more than that. So if you look at this next slide, um, this is the slide is promotions and events. And this is an example of what we do for an event. So we have several different events, uh, whether it's, you know, the, the Christmas party we do, the, the pumpkin carving, the fall, the summer blast off. We do all sorts of events. But what we do is we start with a save the date and then sometimes that starts even six months in advance. So if we have a Christmas party, um, a huge Christmas party every year that we do, we might do a save the date in July. And that July might be, you know, a picture or a video of Santa sitting on the beach. And he says, save the date for our event. We start advertising for that event. Um, then we set up an Eventbrite. And Eventbrite is more of a registration and tells details about the particular event that's coming up. We do continued promotion with graphics and little video snippets. Uh, we do, uh, once we're setting up for the event, we do live on location video. 
we do interviews at the event um, and post those as well as several other pictures. And, you know, it also depends on what kind of event it is. It is. So sometimes we do agent attraction events, and that might be interviews with people at the agent attraction event and why they came to EXP. So it's not only, you know, business events, it's for your agent attraction as well. Um, from there, if it's, a, it's a, if it's a worthy event for a long form video, like an agent attraction event or a teaching event, uh, you have a long form video that was taped of the actual event going on. And then of course the images that are taken at the event, snippet videos, key points uh, of the interviews. You can post all of these different things as different content. If you have a speaker at a, um, an event, for instance, and they said an important quote, you can put that quote out with their picture as piece of content. And then of course, at the end, um, you can do a highlight reel. So even for our Christmas event, we take little snippets of video of, you know, kids having fun, people eating, people socializing. We put together kind of a post event sizzle reel type of thing. And that is another form of um, advertising and marketing and exposure. So out of that one event, we have done, you know, 10 to 20 pieces of content um, before, during, and after in order to promote that event, which promotes our brand. And um, if it's in reference with another business like Shelly showed you, then they get a, a heck of a lot of exposure as well. Am I coming the, across? Um, vision board. You, you are, Craig. I believe so. I hear you well. Um, the vision board, the next slide was just a vision board contest we did. That's just another example. Just try to get super creative in what we're thinking about. Um, so it's not just all real estate. It's kind of an engagement with our clients. It's engagement with our community. At the same time, we post a ton of real estate content as well. Um, we're just trying to show you something different because I know a lot of you probably see a ton of the real estate side of it. Um, this was an idea we came up with for kids to do a giveaway for them to have a vision, uh, to do a vision board, something to keep them busy while they're in this time with their parents and there's not much to do. Another idea that I have right now that I'm working on is we I did a um, <laughs> I did a zoom call for my friend has four five children and I did a zoom call for them and I took them on a field trip to, to Washington DC and I went and we went into the different different museums and I had all these different screens and some videos to share with them I did it by zoom so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do um, one for scuba diving because and, and take them on a scuba diving adventure around the world they loved it it was an hour and a half and they were just glued to the screen. I was amazed that they were actually that interested. So they were my beta test to see if it would be something interesting, but I'm gonna put it out to the community for parents who want to have their kids have something fun and educational to learn over the summer once school gets out and once they're not being teachers at home. So I just was trying to come out with ways to engage with children, you know, to help them keep them busy and occupied. And I, I got so much appreciation from my friend. So I know that the community will love it. We're gonna put it out to her neighborhood as a whole and get the neighborhood involved. So then they'll know that um, LaPage Johnson did something for them that was helping their children, helping their family during COVID. Um, so that's something I'm working on. I don't even know if Craig knows I'm working on that, but it's something that I have going on in the background. Um, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully I can enter entertain some kids <laughs> while I'm doing it. Um, but my point of that is just to tell you to just be creative and don't be afraid to try something really outside the box and even take the ideas we have and build on them and make them your own. And you can basically do anything um, you want and be able to create that sense of community, even though we can't see people right now, you can still have that sense of com community in helping others. Um, this next slide is the events. This is just to show you some of the stuff that we do. Um, we have a ton of fun with the kids. Uh, we like really involving children in our events because parents a lot of times have to go to Christmas parties without their kids or a lot of things they can't take their children to. So we like to really try to involve the family as a whole in our events. And I think the parents really appreciate that. I remember the first event we ever had, we had parents coming up going, I love that you had things for the kids that were truly involving them 
in the actual party. So they had stuff to do, they weren't bored, they were doing crafts, or we had a face painter. We've had a, 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 a basically a, a singer come, and she sang and did Christmas carols with them, and they danced in the middle of the floor. Um, it's just really been fun to watch all of our events evolve over the years. And like Craig said, it's like six months before in July when we start promoting it, and it's all the way into January when we're not when we're not when we're done the party um, from the Christmas party. So the Christmas party is basically an all year event. It takes a long time to plan, so it should be an all year event. Um, there's like five months where we really don't promote it, um, but our clients love it. They look forward to it, and they ask us like when the next one's going to be, and they put it on their calendar because we usually know the year before when our date is going to be. We set it right away. So, um, and basically one of the things is involve your sponsors, make sure that you're, you're um, leveraging your relationships with sponsors because then you don't have to go crazy with an event to make it be successful. Um, the Santa Claus event, for example, that event could just be Santa at an at a, um, office with a cool background and bring in a photographer and you get their Santa pictures for them and the kids have some, you know, hot chocolate and cookies or something like that. It doesn't have to be over the top. And then you can just kind of build off of it. It could just start with dropping off 10 or 20 pumpkins to clients' houses and then doing a little contest around it. Um, it can just start simple and just build upon itself. Um, one of the platforms we use to manage our events is Trello. Um, there's a ton of YouTube channels on how to use Trello. Trello is basically a management I mean, how to manage an event. You can basically set up all these items to do and it can organize and keep, keep make it less stressful. Um, and like it says on the slide, start small, but start. Don't say one day, just put it on the calendar, which is my whole planning ahead thing. If you put the date on the calendar, it will happen because you have no choice for it to happen. <laughs> so um, I'm a big person of putting it on the calendar and Craig and I both believe in making it happen. So we just put a date to it and we make it happen. Um, so, and then basically, Craig, do you want to go into the formula? Are you there? Yes, I, yes. Uh, I will mute your mic if you can because I think it was echoing a little bit. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I will do that right now. Okay, so this is kind of uh, a quick look at what what our little formula is for kind of doubling our production. So relationships um, are, they grow your audience. So the relations are the relationships are the people that are, that you know, that know you, like you, and trust you, and are listening and watching what you're doing. The exposure is what's keep, what keeps you front of mind in those relationships and keeps those relationships strong over time. So you really do, of them. Like I said earlier, a lot of times we develop relationships, but they fade away. Um, real, real estate agents are really good at, you know, not keeping good relationships and going after the brand new relationship over and over, you know, specifically brand new cold leads, you know, instead of trying to keep someone that knows you, likes you and trusts you and will refer, um, you know, we, go, we tend to go after the brand new one, uh, which is, which is not a good thing. So we want to keep those relationships strong and we want to create lots of expo exposure and connection and that overlaps uh, and keeps us keeps those relationships strong over time. So I'm going to get a little bit into um, our exposure end of things and we all use social media platforms uh, to get our exposure and get our message out there and try and do it consistently. Um, I look at the different platforms like this. You know, you have um, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, podcasts, YouTube. So if you look at what I wrote under them, you know, think of Facebook as like, oh, you know, a jack of all trades. It's a little bit of everything. It's editorials. It's uh, funny stuff. It's video, pictures. It's a little bit of everything. So it's kind of like our modern day newspaper. It's a little bit of everything. LinkedIn is more like a business journal. It's business. Twitter is more like real-time news and information. Instagram, very visual. So that would be more of a, a color magazine. Your podcast, that's your talk radio. So you've got a radio station. And then, of course, YouTube is like your TV. So if you look at these different mediums, like had your own television channel, your own radio talk show, your own magazine, you are able to get 
information out quickly. You could reach the business people directly. And then you had one that kind of was a general population type of newsfeed. That's what your social media platforms are. And they're all free. So my uh, recommendation is that you choose the platforms that you're comfortable with and you develop an audience there and you, you keep your relationships strong that you've built in person and through events. Um, keep them strong through these different platforms as well. So that's a great slide to really kind of break down what's, um, you know, how to communicate with people and how to get in front of people without being in front of them, you know, in actual in person. Um, another big thing I would say is do not try and do them all unless you're leveraging yourself and um, you have a passion for doing that. We'll get into how to reach and utilize more than one of these platforms a little bit later in the slide deck. So, um, you know, there's many other forms of communication and relationships that we have. And, you know, obviously texting, I am, you know, direct messaging, voice texting, um, FaceTime, Zoom, StreamYard, um, virtual augmented reality like EXP World, of course, good old, good old phone calls are very important. But what's important about all of the uh, you know, day-to-day -day types of communication and relationships, a lot of them um, get so bar burned out and bogged down, like snail mail, for instance. Sometimes if you go back, once every everybody switches to maybe a modern day form of communication, uh, like email, sometimes snail mail can be very effective if you approach it in the right way. So if you're sending handwritten letters or notes to people, um, that might be a, a way to get in front of people that didn't work yesterday, but might work today. So keep in mind, don't always say, oh, snail mail doesn't work. It's how you approach it. Uh, so just try and be different than what everybody else is doing. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but these are the basics. You know, you want to choose who your audience is, what platforms you're going to use, um, post relevant content, be consistent. That is probably the most important thing on this. Be consistent with whatever you're doing. And that's why I'm saying don't try and do too many things if you're unable to do it. Um, you can schedule your posts and leverage yourself. We'll get a lot in, we'll get into that as well. And then uh, you also want to post different types of content consistently. And that's what we're going to go into right here as we're moving along. Time is your most valuable asset. So you want to leverage yourself for results. You can use tools and technology. You can hire a part-time do-it-all type of admin that helps you with all facets of your business and marketing and exposure might be one of them. Um, you can move into a specialized talent. So that might be hiring a social media specialist, whether you're hiring them um, you know, remote or if you bring them in-house. Um, and then you could even go and hire a virtual assistant. A lot of them specialize in certain things um, that you may not have time to do. But think of your time as money. That is the most important thing. If you're spending all your time creating posts and creating graphics, um, you know, that's important for exposure, but you're not going to be out there selling houses. So it's very important to understand and balance your time um, as you're going along. Another great source is some of these social media posting platforms. Um, you can do them yourself and schedule different um, posts on different platforms through these. So you can schedule, you know, multiple posts at multiple times on multiple platforms using um, a, pr a platform like Hootsuite or Buffer or any of these. Later, uh, I believe we use Later and you can schedule a lot of your basic posts that might just be general marketing uh, that are going out. And that um, would be layered over the posts that are daily posts that are real-time posts that you may not be able to schedule. Um, if you can't do this and you wanna hire someone to do it, that's you know a great opportunity as well to hire someone part-time that might just set all these posts up for you and have them repeating over time. This next slide, these are the, this is what I'm going to go over in the, in the following slides. I'm going to move kind of quickly. Um, you can take pictures of the slides if you'd like. 
Um, but there's several different types of posts that you can post out there on several different types of platforms. So uh, one of the most common questions we get is, I, I don't know what to post you know, um, and where to post. And, and I feel like I'm posting the same thing over and over. So what I'm going to show you is several different types of posts that you can put out there uh, in order to stay relevant and keep people interested in what you're doing. So I'm going to start real basic, tweets and text posts. These are just general information. So tweets are usually just texts and links and hashtags. Um, you can put videos in Twitter as well if you're on Twitter. Twitter is just, a, you know, think of all these different platforms as different audiences. So um, one is not necessarily better than the other. If you're going to choose one, I would probably definitely choose Facebook because that is the biggest audience of them all. Um, I'm also a big fan and of LinkedIn because it's completely different. It's business to business um, and people are used to seeing business updates and information on LinkedIn. So uh, if you don't have a LinkedIn, I would probably recommend that. Um, but you can put any kind of uh, text and, and data um, in, a, in a tweet or the middle one is a LinkedIn post that just shows general information. It says update so it catches your eye and it shows the different um, last 30 days in our market. So think of just things that people are asking you, hey, what's the market like? Well, that's a post. Come up, go on your MLS, pull the data, put it on there, that's a post. Uh, you can also put um, different things in a notepad type of, uh, of app and then just screenshot that and post that. You can post that in a story if you want or just post it as a general post. But text posts I think are, are really good every once in a while because it's just something different straight up information. I'm going to move along quickly. Um, memes are uh, fun, usually related to a time or an event or something that's going on, but memes are just meant to be funny and um, kind of create some engagement. So I think it's good to throw different things in there from time to time and everybody likes a little bit of humor and a little bit of fun and a chuckle. So I like memes to throw them in the mix a little bit and schedule them and a lot of places you could say um, steal the meme. Uh, there's different groups that have uh, different funny memes that you can pull right from. Keep it kind of basic. That's why I'm moving a little bit fast. Obviously still images are very important. Uh, still images can be used for documentation. So on the far left, that's one of the events that uh, our organization threw for EXP uh, Agent Attraction. And Shelly took some pictures with some people that were there. Um, what she did is put the actual text, what was going on, where it was, tagged everybody in the picture. And what that does is creates engagement. It goes live on her post by t posting and tagging the other people in the picture, it pulls them into the post and lets them see it, but it also exposes that post to um, the, everyone in the picture. It exposes it to their audience and their friends. So basically by tagging people and tagging where you are and giving a good description allows the social media platform to put together a custom audience for that particular image. And that's why it's important to explain what that image is. Other um, still images obviously can be just, you know, promoting a certain day with some branding. You see our logo at the bottom um, and some just some random pictures and say, I thought that was a cool hat. So I just took a snapshot of it and threw it out there on social media as a statement or a quote. And it got a ton of traction. And remember that traction draws people to your brand and to your, uh, your social media platform. So when you're also, you're using still pictures or videos or anything, you want to be different. So uh, on the left side, you see a filter that looks a little different. That, that post of a little video of 30 seconds of talking got a tremendous amount of traction because when people are scrolling, they see that it looks different. It catches their eye and they're willing to stop and look at it. The middle picture is a filter. So it's a really cool picture, but it's got a little bit of a filter on it. So it pops. Um, same thing in the upper right. The lower right 
is um, a drone picture of a luxury home here on Lake Norman outside of Charlotte. So that is a different view than people are used to seeing. So when you're thinking of shooting pictures or posting pictures, always try and be a little bit different. Take a little bit of a different view, um, a different filter, anything like that. That catches the eye when people are scrolling. So that's a, a real simple thing to do when you're um, just shooting regular pictures. And then the presentation of those pictures, I'll move real fast on this. You know, you have slide decks, um, uh, collages, and albums. So on the far left, you can just go into Facebook and take, say, a, a listing that might have 30 pictures, put it in a photo album, slap the, the uh, MLS information right in the description, make the title the address, and you have a post that is uh, high content, several pictures, uh, in, in an album form and people can slide through those that entire album of pictures in the middle That's a slide deck. That's more of Instagram. So you can pick up to 10 pictures and create more of a slide deck for um, One of your listings or an event or anything that's going on and then of course on the far right you've got collages so we're talking about still images and we've just named so many different ways that you can post a still image so a collage a slide deck an album you want, you know, you can um, put filters on them, different angles. I mean, those are all the different things that make you stand out above and beyond the other person rather than just posting a picture every time. So just be a little creative. Live stream. Um, if Shelly's there, I'm going to have her chime in in a minute because we both do a lot of live stream and uh, Facebook lives, Instagram lives. Um, Zoom calls, Steamyard, uh, Streamyard. We we do just about everything. Watch parties, you name it. And this is a great way to get a maximum reach. And um, I highlighted the word reach in this slide because reach, the definition of reach in social media is how far you know outside of your profile are people going to see this particular content and. Um, live video has the best reach organically. So if you were just to do a live video, social media platforms love that and they show it to the most amount of people and it alerts people. And when you alert people, they come on and they watch and then their friends get an alert because they're, you know, they're closer to that friend's profile. Um, so there's different types of live, but live is key and consistency is key. So I'm going to, if Shelly's there, I'm going to hand over and she can talk a little bit about what she does with with lives you can see her in these pictures and what she's doing i'm here um so the first picture is me basically i was we were deemed non-essential in charlotte so i was working with craig and other realtors um, locally here to help us become essential and was just trying to give um, information about that because it was a very scary time a few weeks ago when we were deemed that way and nobody knew what to do with their real estate so that was just a, trying to help the real estate community and then the other um, live video the, with the four of us that's basically a, a talk show that I do every it's so funny we're all talk show hosts now um, every Saturday at 11 a.m. we interview either a a, another business or we share what's happening that week to help agents and uh, business owners be able to just keep moving forward every Saturday it just gives them a little bit of a boost in the or shot in the arm or a boost to help them and um, we give we try to talk about we, we we don't try we talk about mindset um, and how to help your mindset and move the needle in your business so um, we do that every Saturday at 11 it's on my personal page so if anybody wants to join us that's for anybody um, but it is what Craig said is hundred percent true um, you can do watch parties and that's really been big uh, with sharing video and um, get come at it from a place of contribution and everybody really appreciates that so um, just write down your ideas and start doing different things that you may be uncomfortable doing but just get comfortable being uncomfortable um, I'm not a public speaker or a live person um, but now I am because that's just what our what our market requires and I do love people so it's it, it makes it okay so just get comfortable being uncomfortable and um, you you'll do great you don't have to be perfect nobody likes perfect anyways so that's basically what I had to say about that slide
Awesome. If you could mute your mic, that's great. And, um, you know, one of the things Shelly said, that middle picture right there, she's talking about um, when COVID-19 first started, uh, one of the main counties where Charlotte sits in is Mecklenburg County. And it was, we were deemed as real estate agents, we were in real estate industry was deemed um, non-essential. Um, so we have some connections and Shelly has some connections and um, we started a kind of a movement and Shelly did more about, you know, showing and explaining why we, we were essential um, and, you know, being responsible. But the important thing is when she went live on here, um, she was instantly an authority in the industry. And that's what video and consistency um, in video can do for you. Um, it's, you know, she, she has a, lo a lot of pull and a lot of uh, relationships, but she got that through relation, you know, creating those relationships over time. So by going live on video, all these other agents started con uh, contacting her and saying, hey, can I, how can I help? And she started building new relationships immediately because she put herself out there live. Um, so there's, there's a lot of power in that. And, um, we're all just doing our best to get out there. And like she said, just get uncomfortable and do it and get comfortable being uncomfortable and you'll get better and better out of it, at it. No one, nobody is, is great at, at just jumping right in there and doing it. They all started somewhere. So live video is, is huge. Um, next, the next best thing is just recorded video. So there's all sorts of different types of recorded video that you could do in the upper left hand corner. That's more of a YouTube long form type of uh, video that we did um, on why we moved to eXp. So that is more informational and a long form. We have uh, quick videos that are done for our listings that might be, you know, 20, 30 seconds to a minute quick clips uh, like on the far right that's a Twitter video it's about 20 seconds long it just is on location and it tells about some different land and lots that we have available and then in the bottom right that is for the um, vision board event uh, Robin on our team that's her daughter she did a fantastic job explaining the vision board event that was uh, a total success and a hit and you know that's just more and more exposure for for our company and we did something great at the same time so video by itself even if it's not live will still get a great amount of reach so try and do more video whenever you can that's another obvious form of um, exposure and different types of, of posts that you can do when you're posting uh in, you know on any platform you want to give a lot of information don't just post a picture or post a video. Try and uh, ex explain what that content is with words. Put as much content in there. Basically, you're talking to a computer, which is the platform. And the platform has um, kind of like artificial intelligence in it. So you have to give it information of location and what is the picture of and, and you know what audience do you want to see it. So by tagging yourself, in that particular or tagging a location in that particular list or post is very important. So the one on the far left, that is uh, a listing of ours that's in a country club. So by tagging that country club as a location, that post is more likely to get shown to a lot of people that follow that particular location and follow that particular country club. So we're putting our listing right in front of the people that are interested in that club. And that is, it, that's key. That just ex, it, um, increases your audience and your reach. You know, in the middle, that's one of our builders and that's a builder meeting. So by just posting a, hey, we're in a meeting, we're working, we're, we're getting things done and giving people an inside look, it makes it personable. And it allows people to say, you know what, I see their stuff all the time and they look like good people and they're always working and they get stuff done and they're selling lots of houses. You're giving people a peek behind the curtain, like Shelly said earlier. Um, so always try and post uh, and check into your location wherever you are. And it's a great thing to do also for other businesses. So if you want to promote business and you know, you're a realtor and you go into the local store and you say, hey, love this store, shop here all the time, you take a quick picture, 
and you tag them and it comes from your business page, they're going to be like, wow, you know, that was really cool. I didn't even know that real estate company, but now I do. And that was really nice of them. So it's, it's, you want to give, uh, and ultimately you will receive. I'm a true believer of that. Another quick one, quotes. I mean, there's lots of quotes um, that you see out there and you just, a quick post with a picture is a great uh, way to just get people looking at it. When people are scrolling through social media, they stop and they'll read a quick quote because it's easy, it's quick, it's fast, but it's, if it's branded to you and you're doing lots of that, you're going to um, get more and more exposure. So you can't always post the same thing um, but that's why we're, we're, we're showing you all these different ideas and, and how to post and stay in front of people with re relevant content. Stories. So stories are primarily seen uh, mostly right now in Facebook and Instagram. Some of the app platforms are picking them up. But stories get a tremendous amount of reach because people click through them really fast. And it's a really fast way for people to, to see um, what you're doing life is like in the events and the, and the things that are going on in your life or your business. So uh, we're big fans of stories uh, on Facebook and Instagram. They're a little bit different audiences. So if you have the time to do um, one or the other, a lot of times on Instagram, you can actually share your Instagram story to Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram. Um, but put, you know, a, you know, some slides in your story that you can reproduce as well. You don't have to create a new story necessarily every day. So like on the far left side, that's one of the different neighborhoods that we represent. That's a slide that I post, you know, once a week in our story. Um, so I just recycle it. A lot of these are recycled. So, you know, put current events in there. Also put, um, you know, what's coming up, like coming soon. We have a coming soon waterfront. And then we have some general branding, like a neighborhood or our international division of our, our, our business. And then just places around town where we're trying to promote lifestyle. People aren't necessarily always interested in watching, you know, real estate related stuff, but they are always interested in doing something. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're all dying to do something get out right now, but you know, things to do around town is a great thing to post as a real estate agent because it's not necessarily real estate related, but it is at the same time because you're showing people what it's like to live in that, in that town or, or city. Documentation is one of the easiest things. Documentation is what's going on, what's going on in your day. So, you know, I could be on location at a, out at one of our neighborhoods. You know, some people like doing vlogs, like a video blog diary uh, documentation of a day or a week or so. Uh, daily documentation. So the second slide there is, you know, Shelly posted this, you know, a couple weeks back. It shows everything that we did in that day. And we were on all these different meetings and we were on live Zoom calls and we were in EXP world. And um, it just shows that we're working and we're, we're still doing things and that we love what we do. Uh, far left is this documentation of growing, you know, a, a building a house with one of our builders. So there's, it shows that things are going on and we're getting business done. So documentation is a great way to post and it's just real life stuff. One of the easiest things is testimonials and bios. So if you have a new agent come to your team, um, put together a quick bio, present it nice, there's a post. Uh, you can reproduce that as well and put that out, you know, once a month showcasing uh, different agents on your team. If it's a testimonial that went to Google um, or Facebook, take that text, put it over a nice looking picture and post that as a post. It promotes you. It's real, um, you know, real life, you know, happy, happy clients. So it's important to keep your testimonials out there. People really, really uh, rely on reviews and testimonials of people that have done business with you in the past. So always ask for a testimonial and you can direct them right to your business Google page or your Facebook page 
and have them write that, but you can reproduce that information and make it into a post. Finishing up, I know we're running out of time. Some other forms of post, hyperlapse, I'm sure you've all seen like the sun rising fast or the sun going down fast. Um, hyperlapse is a, a really cool app. A lot of the phones have time lapse capability now. And basically what it does, it might take like every 10th frame and makes a video out of it. So basically is a, a high speed video. And that is a, a great different look that you can post uh, in any form. So you can put it on your stories, you can put it on any platform. Everybody likes to see those because they're really neat looking. You can create a poll. There's lots of different um, apps that you can create polls and ask questions. Remember people, one of the most important things about social media is being social. You have to be social. So you can't just post things, you have to interact. When people like your stuff and comment on your stuff, you need to like it back, you need to comment, you need to create conversation and two-way social interaction. And what that does is it increases increases the reach and the momentum of that post um, and gets more engagement. So it's very important to, to interact. That's one of the most important things I could say in this entire deck. The last picture there on the right is um, Boomerang, which is also a different type of look. So just look for different ways to express yourself uh, when posting things. Um, who is seeing your posts? Remember, we talked about live posts. They give you tons of reach, video posts, images, text posts, you want to use different apps, filters, angles, all of those different things. Um, I, I call social juice is basically giving, it's like pouring gasoline on the fire of your post. So if you put um, a, a solid description, you put a couple hashtags, you get, if you start getting likes and comments, and then you're replying and liking those comments and you're creating engagement, that's when the platforms are really going to work to your advantage and push out um, a massive amount of reach for your posts. Ask people to comment on your post. Ask questions. Watch parties on Facebook are huge because you can play a video and hit watch party and that invites other people in your friend group to watch it. And if they watch it, the more engagement it gets, the farther reach that watch party gets. Um, you can repeat watch parties. There's just so many different things to do that are really easy. What I would suggest is just play around with it. And like Shelly said earlier, you have to just do it. You can't, you have to take action and do it. So ideas are garbage without action is probably one of the, the things I can end with and um, leave you with. I, I know that was a lot of information. We went kind of quick. And um, does anybody have any closing questions or if Shelly wants to end with anything, we can go there. Uh, Craig, would you mind putting the slide deck in the, co in the comments? People are asking for our slide deck. So I just really appreciate everybody coming and joining us today. It's awesome to have so many agents um, to share with and to be able to help hopefully and we learn from all of you so we just appreciate everyone sharing and the way this company's culture is of giving and sharing with each other. Yes, thank you very uh, very much everybody and as far as the slide deck, it's a um, big file and it's in PowerPoint. Um, but what I do know is I believe they are recording this and they will put it in the ESP University um, group in Workplace. So you'll be able to watch it live and, and right through it with a um, with video. Thanks. Awesome. Yes, this is Christian awesome. Edwards in Houston. I have a quick question for you. Yes. Sure. sure. Um, I'm new to the business and new to EXP. i um, only been in the market for about six weeks, which was awesome. Same time as COVID. So one of us will last, the other one will not. Um, but I have always been um, anti-social media and um, I'm working very hard every day to change my heart on that. Um, I love people too and just love being with people, but not on social media. So um, I've, I'm moving past that. But my question is, 
Um, what do you suggest? I'm torn on how I'm supposed to, um, like, put the post. Do I put the post on my my realtor business page and then put the post on my personal page? Um, and then is it okay to post the same post on Instagram and then on Facebook? Um, I just don't know because obviously all of your friends don't instantly join your business page when you're first starting up. And I don't want the information to only be, you know, available to a, such a small percentage of people. Um, so what is your suggestion with that? Uh, you'll you'll hear lots of different opinions on this, but my my opinion is I would create a personal page and then I would create a business page and I would post all of your business content on your business page and try and build that audience as big as you can. But once in once you post something on your business page, if you feel that is a a, a good post and a, a post that you want more people to see, you want to share that to your personal page. So you want people to see you as the individual that they know, like, and trust on your personal but you also want them to know that you are a, a realtor. So, you know, if, 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 if Susie has a, you know, a regular business, a regular personal page and she has a business page, a lot of people know Susie as, you know, the, the, the awesome woman that sits next to me at soccer practice, but they don't know she's a, a realtor. So by having a personal page, you draw that audience in um, and then you post your business page that has your branding from your business page to your personal page. And you know, you want to keep a, a ratio, especially on your personal page, you want to have more of your personal stuff. And it doesn't have to be personal, personal. It could just be funny stuff or interesting stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be family or personal stuff if you're a private person, but put stuff that the general public would be interested in on your personal page. And then, you know, every so many posts, you want to share some of your business in there to throw on your realtor cap and let people know that you are a realtor and successful. Perfect. Yeah, that's definitely something that I've struggled with. So like, for example, um, there's a Chuck E. Cheese right by our house and they're working hard to stay in business during COVID since obviously no one can come in. So they're doing $5 pizzas and $5 wings and like $3 cheese sticks or whatever. So yesterday I did a live video and posted it to my real estate page um, and then shared it to my personal page. Um, because I have I have several different pages on several different platforms because I have a small business that I've had for several years and um, I just want to get more engagement on everything. I just didn't know if it was okay to share one post that you put on your real estate page or one pers you know personal post that you put on your page to your real estate page and vice versa. Um, and then to share that from Facebook to Instagram um, and things like that. I mean, it's all preference, but what I would do is is just try and be consistent, keep it simple. I know they're about to start another class where we're going to go, but um, keep it simple. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of trying to keep your real estate business as your business and, you know, also your personal as your personal and then cross them over a little bit. If you have other businesses, I would try not to cross all the businesses together because you want someone that, you know, that you want people to think that like, hey, you know what, this is her primary focus. She's very successful at it. And sometimes if people are doing 10 different businesses, and I'm not saying you're doing that, um, they don't feel confident that you're a full-time agent. So I'm a, I'm a true believer of you know, keep your business as your primary and just share to your, your personal, but try not to, to bring other businesses into it. Perfect. Thanks again. I totally agree. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thank day. You.